Hello everyone, we're obviously having a little bit of difficulties here for some reason. Oh, it's because there's a lot of people requesting to join. So it's very difficult for us to... Hopefully this works. This could be the wrong person. Yes. <laughs> I thought this Mate, might be someone else. I thought this might be someone else. <laughs> there's, oh, there's man. So many people request me. I can't see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. This Instagram thing is not a piece of cake <laughs> for anyone, man. It's just uh, so difficult to uh, get used to that. You should have seen me and Kane Williamson the other day. It was 25 <laughs> minutes. He's never used Instagram in his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. I think Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal the other day were like an hour trying to work out how they could talk to each other on this. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. What's been happening? Yeah, not much, uh, David. Just uh, we're under an Im immense strict lockdown. Yeah. So, uh, been just home for the past 40, 45 days now. Uh, yeah. sitting, sitting home doing not much actually just doing live chats with people who I know the best <laughs> Mate, it's been exactly the same here it's been very uh, challenging not uh, it's bizarre like being told you can't play like cricket like if you get dropped okay you understand but like to be told by the government you can't leave your house you have to stay indoors you got to you know work out how to survive um, yeah. it's it's totally bizarre, but everyone's in the same situation. It's crazy. But at least I, I read in the news today, Australia is easing a lockdown a little bit uh, where you can go to restaurants, cafes, uh, and, you know, you can still go outdoors. Here, we can't even go outdoors except buying groceries, which to me is a bit strange right now. That's because crazy. Because I have no idea what to buy in groceries. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I, I, was no like, idea. I, was, I was just reading and... Uh, I apologize to all the Indian fans there, but alcohol has got a surcharge now, big time in India, and they're going to deliver yes. to people's houses. Yeah, you it's saw crazy. what happened the first day when they opened the uh, liquor shops here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Went crazy here, man. People were queuing up. Uh, there was about two kilometers, uh, uh, you know, uh, big queue, people waiting for uh, people to buy alcohol. And they shut it in, in the next... Uh, in one day's time because they I mean it's it's crazy because so many people are out on the roads and there are chances people might get infected because of that. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I know people who haven't travelled to, to India wouldn't understand that some places are a dry state and you actually have yeah, to yeah. apply for a certificate to actually drink alcohol. <laughs> yeah, absolutely man. How's your family? Um, family good? Uh, family good. How's uh how's Ritika and Mara? Yeah, good. they're good, man. They're chilling. They're home. They're happy to have me home. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's good. Uh, I got to spend my birthday, uh, which was a couple of weeks back, uh, with them at home. That's I'm, beautiful. Yeah, never been around uh, on my birthday as well with them. So finally got to stay home with them, spend some time with them, which was good. And I think that's something that some a lot of people don't understand that when you have if you have family or not, you actually miss a lot of different things that, you know, whether it's weddings or birthdays or even Mother's Day, this is my first time home for Mother's Day in a long time. Yeah, yeah. They're little things that we'd miss. Yeah, absolutely, man. Being being with the family is so important. Uh, sometimes it's hard to explain when we are out there playing that family is so important for us because when we grow up, when we grow up in India, it's actually like that. When we grow up, we say cricket is life. Yeah, but there's so much beyond, uh, beyond that. You know, your cricket finishes when you're, what, uh, 38, 39. <laughs> I don't know when <laughs> you finish, but I'll certainly finish before that. But uh, uh, so there is actually, uh, you know, much more than that. Uh, when you get married, when you have family, you realize the importance of that uh, a lot more. When you are, oh, de when you're single, when you're just you know, uh, playing, you, you don't think about that much. <clears throat> but now being with them, spending so much time with them, I, I realize how important it is. And they need us more than anything else. They need our support. They need 
us to be around uh, to make sure that you know they are comforted as well i'm sure it's yeah. the same with you yeah you've got a you've got three beautiful daughters uh, and you've got a you've got a beautiful wife and uh, i'm pretty sure it's so hard for candice to be uh, without you managing three kids i know we have only one <laughs> right now and i know how difficult it is for ritika when i am not around <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't even imagine how it is like for Candice. Yeah, look, it's it obviously has its challenges, but I think the best thing for us is I look at the ashes for my myself coming home. I always had a smile on my face because you got your family there. It was good. Yeah, yeah, it's a blessing. Yeah. It's yeah. a blessing. Yeah, but, it's beautiful. But, man. <clears throat> but as we say this time at the moment, we'll we'll be playing over there. We're playing IPL. Um, yeah. I, I do have a couple of questions for you though. I go back to I think it was was it 2014. I want to I want to like I want you to explain to me as a as a captain of a franchise you lose yeah. five in, you lose five in a row <laughs> how do you motivate the guys to come back from five in a row and then you turn around and win seven out of the next nine and then you win the whole thing <laughs> I was that was pretty tough uh, I remember uh, we were going through really tough times uh, we were facing a lot of uh, pressure uh, from from the from the spectators uh, you know how people in india especially in mumbai they they're quite passionate about uh, cricket over here uh, and then the franchisee as well our franchisee uh, owners they're quite passionate as well about the game so there was a lot of pressure i still remember uh, we were in dubai uh, for the first five games and then we had head back to india uh, the fa- the five games in dubai we lost all the games yeah. and then you know luckily for me i had pointing around uh, the team you i'm sure uh, no better person than you to explain that to or to understand that because you know what impactful person he is uh, when he's around the group uh, yeah definitely i was i was i was watching your uh, uh, the series on amazon the test yeah and he was around uh, with you guys during the world cup and you know i could i could think back and you know start imagining how he was he was you know pretty much the same uh, you know motivating the youngsters around the guys just feeling one of us not the coaching staff so he was he was doing the same things and more yeah. than you know one uh, good thing that st- stuck out was uh, about ponting was he was only going to go and talk to the younger guys he was not worried so much about the senior players in the squad he was trying to make sure that all the youngsters in the squad are very well uh you know uh, staying in that mental zone and not worrying about anything else they yeah. were keep, his idea was to make sure that the youngsters don't drift away so much yeah i'm sure uh, you know the senior guys will take care of itself uh, but it's the younger guys who i need to look after and that's what he exactly did and you know from once we returned to Bom- uh, mumbai things changed i remember uh, he gave us that pep talk in mumbai events we came to mumbai and everything changed around that you know <clears throat> yeah that's good i i think you you hit the nail on the head he's a very passionate guy and he'll always leave it upon the senior players to understand what they do because you can't you can't change guys who have been playing for you know 5 to 10 years international cricket he's played it he's lived it and now yeah. he's coaching it it's about the younger guys coming along with the experienced players to say hey there's there's always hope and belief and that's one thing he I think you know the same as with with having Sachin around or you know whether it's I think Viru with me at Delhi yeah. having these having these guys around it's a, it's a bit of an energy boost for younger guys and you know the same the same with you coming into a Indian cricket team with all yeah. those superstars and I came in at the same time I was like wow I can't believe I'm actually playing with these guys now how do we act around these guys what's right what's wrong but you're trying to establish yourself as a cricketer and you're good enough to be there yeah absolutely i think uh, a lot of these guys have made a great impact uh, you know on the team whichever team they've been part of and especially you know ipl what ipl has done uh, to all the cricketers is you know getting to know all these uh, guys from various parts of the world uh, getting to know their culture getting to understand what they do as a player and for us it's been fascinating to know all you guys uh, you know when you're playing for your country it's a totally different ball game but when you come here 
you know a lot of lot of the guys here get to learn so much from each other you know uh, they because yeah. they watch you guys and they 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 see you prepare yourself uh, before the game what you like to do what you don't like to do how much time you spend in the gym and things like that so it's you know ipl in a way has done wonders to world cricket not just indian cricket but also to many other guys many other cricketers in the world oh one thing i did notice when i came to the ipl my first time how much cricket balls you indian cricketers hit like so many balls and like i know here yeah. we we'll probably get a good half an hour to an hour of throwdowns but the resources you have with um guys available to net bowl to you i could spend 6 yeah. hours there <laughs> yeah because i mean ipl uh, the tournament itself is very well planned and all this franchise they take this two months very seriously because they want to win this championship uh so they they i'm sure all the franchise they start preparing well before the tournament starts and that includes all all these things uh managing net bowlers managing the pra- practice facilities uh getting your players to come uh you know to the city a lot earlier than the tournament starts so those things i think uh, i don't know about sunrisers but mumbai has done that pretty well in the last few years they they've gotten their players quite early and you know there's a little 10 days camp that we try and held uh, before before the tournament starts so you know just for the newer guys to get used to uh, the staff the players as well so it's it's very important uh, i when ipl started i played for that city hyderabad but uh, it's it's a different name now but the city is the same i, I remember uh, how passionate people are in hyderabad as well you know like yep. i remember we were playing the finals last year i uh, csk and mumbai and yep. they were going berserk shouting uh, sunrises the orange army <laughs> which was you know which shows uh, you know people there are quite uh, supportive and they get behind their team which was amazing to see you know uh, it's it's something that doesn't happen every time uh, you know uh, but it was great to see and there were uh, orange jerseys uh, in the stadiums which was good you know it's quite it a is. passionate city uh, to be part of and i i think the the reasoning behind that as well is because someone called rohit sharma took a hat trick and scored 100 for deccan against mumbai yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can't believe that man i i seriously cannot believe i took a hat trick against mumbai when i was playing for hyderabad it just uh i don't even remember how i used to bowl then it's just unfortunate <laughs> i i got a finger injury and then i cannot uh, grip the ball properly you know yeah. uh, so I, i stopped it and these days it's better to stay away from bowling well it still remains you're the only indian and i think shane watson's the only international player to do that <laughs> oh shit <laughs> if i think of it now it's quite embarrassing man that i took a hat trick oh, it's surprise it surprised me when i saw it. i was like i didn't even i can't couldn't remember last time you ever bowled <laughs> and they the decent batters as well uh, i remember the first one was jp dumini uh second one lbw was, or court yeah uh, it was caught behind leg side <laughs> <laughs> gilly gilly was uh, wicket keeping i took a great catch uh yeah. and then the second one was abhishek nair third one was harbhajan singh uh, i'm pretty sure that he underestimated me he just wanted to come and <laughs> swing the bat but he missed Bajji. it but, yeah but clean ball was that in uh, was that when You guys won in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I, I used to bowl a lot <laughs> back then. I yeah. used to bowl a lot. I wanted to ask you the same thing. If you remember, we played under nineteen together uh, when you guys toured uh, India. Uh, I think Usman was captain. Usman yeah. or Moses? Moses Hendrik. I I don't remember either one of uh, one was leading the side. Yeah, and you. were a middle order batsman he used to bat at 6 or 7 if i am not wrong yep. and he used to bowl a handy leg spinner yep. and a gun fielder that i know i still remember that <laughs> how did that transition happen for you the you know when you started opening the batting now dominating all three formats that's you know, that's where someone asked me the other day where's my favorite place to play in india and i i say the most picturesque place is dharamshala yeah you know and i remember vividly playing there yeah, and yeah. I was bowling leg spin and I I I remember Warney not having a great record there and like as a leg spinner 
I think you got to bowl faster. Like, you know, you look at Mishra. Um, I remember Rahul Sharma. Yeah, I got, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously Rashid. But like, I don't know. It was like, it was bizarre. I started at middle order. I was sort of like coming in at the middle, sort of back end of innings. Um, and then like in 2000 and 2009, uh, Dominic Thornley, who played a handful of games for Australia, he was captain yeah. in New South Wales. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Philip Hughes was opening the batting at the time. And yeah. we were chasing a small total against Tasmania. And then I go in the change room. I just go to take off my, my clothes, get ready. Um, and then, you know, obviously go and watch the boys chase. And he said, you're opening. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll open the batting then. So I went out and opened the batting. And, and me and Husey ended up both getting hundreds. Um, and then I was told the next game, I'm opening the batting in a T20 game against Sean Tate. And I was just like, oh. no thanks. Yeah. Like... You don't know what to think. So, like, I just automatically said, okay, yes, well, I have to. I've got no choice. I end up scoring some runs the next game. And then it sort of it flowed on from there. And then, like, my bowling, yeah, my bowling just didn't really progress. I didn't really put more energy or emphasis into my game. I then all of a sudden yeah. turned into an opening batter. And then all of a sudden I'm walking out at the MCG in front of 90,000 people against South Africa. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, game. I saw that. I was and then literally, that. literally I'm there like, you, you, you're pinching yourself going, what, what's going on here? Like, it's, it's, it was so bizarre how it all unfolded from, I think it was 2006, I think, we played you guys um, yeah, uh, in India. And yeah, I think I, it was and, 2006 or five. Yeah, one of the, it was one of them. And, like, it was crazy. Like, I was like, man, you know, the ball's spinning so much. How, am I, how can you ever play here? Like, and then I'm thinking, yeah. nowadays, I'm thinking, all right, if I go back to India, I want to bat in the middle because it spins con conventionally. Open yeah, the batting yeah. with a new ball. Man. Yeah. Bat you batting, which one is turning, which one is coming in. It's crazy. Like, it's... So, second innings, I find, like, so tough because, you know, obviously, Ash has got good control where he goes over the ball. But as a batsman, people don't realize you can't, you can't see that far down the wicket where he's actually... If he's going like this or if he's going like that. Yeah. It's very difficult. And with the new ball and it's skidding on, that's why I bet you would have hated facing Haranga Harath. Yeah, I mean, never... that's, people, that's when, you know, all these coaches, when they come and say, please watch his hand, please watch his hand. It's not so easy to watch his hand. It literally happens in one second. You know, he releases, yeah. the bowler releases the ball literally within, within a second. And it's very hard to judge, you know, what, where, and these days, the bowlers are very smart. They don't, yeah, they don't try and release the ball through the seam, like ex except the test matches where all the conventional spinners they bowl with the seam, but in limited overs, you know they they don't they don't. And in India, no. the problem is even the spinners, when the ball gets so roughed up, you you don't see the seam uh, so clearly. No, so it's no, hard no. even in the nets when we bat. We we often try and practice that, uh, you know, to to try and see. Uh, the fingers of the off spinner, the wrist of the leg spinner, but it's so tough. It's 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 tough. It's not easy. Yes, no. in the textbook, it's it says that you have to <laughs> always watch uh, the bowler's hand, but it's not so easy, man. Especially guys like Rashid Khan and all. I mean, it's so fast. His <laughs> action is fast. so quick. You can't you can't even watch what he's trying to do. You've almost got to like. Uh, it's 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 hard to describe to people. Like, if you're playing twenty twenty cricket white ball, you. You think, okay, it's probably going to slide on in the first six, but yeah. with I think with a finger spinner who can actually turn it both ways, you you can only play on line. So like you know, if you if you're surviving, you're trying to get off struck. If you're not, and you're I don't know, I, I remember I think it was Livingston started slog sweeping Rashid in um, Jaipur, and he got yeah. a hold of him. And normally I wouldn't bowl Rash in the first uh, six. But we had to because we're under the pump. So you go to, you know, one of your best bowlers. So what do you, you, you try and get a wicket? But people don't realize if you put pressure on bowlers, um, yeah. especially in the first six, you can get the upper hand. But after that, oh, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's difficult. Once the ball gets older and it turns, where it does yeah. turn ma majority of places, except if you're batting second in Mumbai, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. it can be it, it's challenging. Yeah, with, with once the ball gets... How gets but, and That's one. Like, what's your mindset there? Like, every single team batting second, you you, you go to Mumbai, eight o'clock game. All right, you win the toss, you bowl first. 
Yeah. So what what do you think as like as, as a captain in your mindset? How do you like say to the guys, or you probably don't need to say to the guys, all right, we've lost the toss. We're obviously yeah. you know we we're going to be bowling second now. We have to bat well. Two hundred is obviously the the total that you need to get. How do you what what goes through your mind when you're applying your sort of your <laughs> trade when you're out there? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the first thing you know, especially at Mumbai, you know. Everyone's watching me at the toss. <laughs> so when I'm tossing the coin, oh sorry, I don't toss the coin. The opposition captain toss the coin. So when I'm at the uh, in the in the center uh, for the toss, I could see from the from my peripheral vision that okay, there are guys all over me. They're watching me. What is happening with the toss? Because the toss is so crucial. And you know, when I lose the toss, they seriously like they feel that this. He's the worst guy in the world. You know they don't they don't look at me. They don't talk to me for a second when I come back. But then yeah, that's when my job comes in. I get everyone together and just you know, uh, like we our preparation actually becomes uh, starts much before that toss, uh, before yeah, the training yeah. session and things like that. I know it's important for the boys to know that you know toss is under. no one's control uh, we can't control the toss we have to play good cricket and if you look at mumbai's record we have won lot of games batting first yeah uh, at one kid and that's mainly because of you know the plans the strategy that we put in place uh, before the games uh, yep. and all the credit has to go to uh, the coaching staff from where uh, whether it was uh, you know ponting bond and all these guys they put in a lot of effort now mahela is working with us so these guys have put in a lot of effort uh, to make sure that we get our plans right once we yep. have the plans in place you know and in spite of that you lose a game it's fine i mean uh, it happened to us uh, when chennai beat us last year i think it was uh, last year or year before last sorry uh, we we got 160 and they were 50 for 5 or something and wayne bravo came in and just started hitting and you know he got the game away uh, very easily and we had yeah. guys like bumra and you know mitch mcclan again bowling towards the end so you couldn't expect like bumra will you know uh, give so many runs towards the end because he's is is done that pretty well he's handled that situation pretty well in the end yeah. but that was his off day and bravo got him uh, that day yeah. and it's just uh, one of those days and so that's what i mean i what i'm trying to say here is that like, plans have been put in place but there are days where you know everything will not go according to the plan so you don't get frustrated you just get everything together come back the next yeah. day try focusing on that because at uh, parkade it's very easy to get drift uh, get uh, drifted away because sometimes you will think okay you know we did everything right but still we ended up on losing the game that's where like one place boovy says he always likes bowling because the ball swings and nips around the first sort of four overs yeah 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 and it's always challenging bowlers are in the game at one kid for sure the first few overs if you pitch it in the right areas there there are chances you might you know knock uh, the batsman early and then after uh, the six overs as well the spinners come into game uh, when yeah. the ball is still dry uh, because you get good bounce sometimes with dust turn there with the new ball as well so yeah. you know it's, it's even contest at one kid i feel but on days where it's like absolutely belter and flat there's uh, there's not much to do for the bowlers except to just stay quiet in one place and keep bowling what you do yeah exactly that it's a bit like um hyderabad as well sometimes like when you get on a yeah. like it's it's actually bizarre because i think maybe the same as when caddy but we know at hyderabad if you use one side of the square you know it's going to be absolute belter And then the yeah. other side of the square, it might be one fifty, one sixty, and you have to work out how, how do you plan accordingly? Because usually, I'm not gi- we're giving away our tips here, but like on one wicket you go All right, well it's better to bat first, yeah. Um, and on the other side, it's better to chase, because yeah. a lot of a lot of a lot of grounds are quite similar. Like I look at Kolkata, that's now one of the best batting wickets as well because it doesn't, yeah. it's not like a big turner like it used to be. Yeah. Um, and I think. a lot of people don't realize like we can't go out there and hit every ball for six we're not we're not we're not hard hard dick or we're not andre we we can't do that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
It's yeah. sometimes it's impossible. I think is that Baji? Was that Baji on there? Say something in Hindi. <laughs> yeah, say something in Hindi. <laughs> Me? Uh, yeah, thora, thora. Of you. He's asking you. <laughs> I thought he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean aap kaise hai aap kaise that's 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 good enough man it's all the it's all the basics i don't know too much in uh, in hindi we are yeah, i mean you you're doing quite well on tiktok man tiktok that is you're my really daughter killing tiktok man <laughs> i'm actually i'm going to i'm going to do one tomorrow I'm, me and my wife are going to try another dance buta bomba was one that we got told to do yeah 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 I, I said I'll make a promise to the the um all the Indian fans I'll I'll try and do one a week but man some of these Tollywood and Bollywood dancers they're so hard yeah. to learn What was <laughs> Look that? at our commercials It was, was this uh, <laughs> Tollywood the Telugu movie song you did right if I'm not wrong Yeah Bhuta Bomma Yeah I mean I even I don't know about that um, did you Come on uh, come on man you have to research these things uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I'm hardly keeping up with Bollywood right now it's I don't know if I'll keep up with Tollywood. Yeah, But, well, uh, I, it's it, there's so many different like uh, things out there. Like, I didn't know what TikTok was. Like, my my daughter downloaded uh, something. Like, they were playing games, and something just came up, and I was like, "What is this stuff?" And she's like, "It's TikTok." Yeah, so I okay. scrolled through. I remember last year, one of the cricketers was like, "You got to watch this stuff. It's funny." Yeah. So I went. I went on it. I looked at it I said all right let's just put some smiles on people's faces take the mickey out of myself which is yeah. quite easy to do <laughs> um but yeah like it's 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 a little bit of fun and look I don't know how long it will last but hopefully once this pandemic's over um yes. you know I think the ICC World Cup maybe that's in sort of a you know it's it's probably not going to go ahead I think by the looks of of what's happening here I think getting yeah. everyone into one spot's going to be difficult um but actually that's was I was saying I was reading today it would be to me a lot of people talk to me about like what's our rivalry like and i was like i you know it's when you walk on the field it's completely different when i walk yes. on the field for sunrises when you walk on the field for mumbai it doesn't matter if you've played with that person for x amount of years you're playing for that team that you're in so yeah. it's combat it's combat mode you know you're competitive yeah it's passion So yeah. it's 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 one it's one of those things like I love playing against India in India because you're you know everyone's against you but it's the hardest conditions to play in for us. Yeah. It's like when you guys come here it's hard conditions yeah. for you because you're not used to it. Yeah. So you know you've almost got this more motivation to to succeed. Yeah. But well, it's it's very I difficult. Mean, I I personally love uh playing against Australia whenever um you know there's an opportunity uh to play against australia it's 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 a different feeling and last year when we were in australia uh it, when we won the series uh which has never happened before in the history of indian cricket uh it was it was it was good for us as a team uh i know uh, you guys were missing but still i mean uh, you know what the bowlers did there what the batters did there for us was a great boost you know and actually we were quite looking forward to this year's uh, tour as well uh, i hope uh, somehow you know both the boards australian board and indian board they they somehow try and manage uh, to do something and get this series underway because it'll be great for uh, for the teams as well firstly but also great for people to start cricket with you know uh, that'll be a great mm. series for people to watch uh, and you know that's a great way will be a great way to kick off uh you know the cricket uh, in the world uh, if that happens i don't know ipl is likely uh, to happen at some stage as well but i have no idea about what uh what date or what month it would be uh, once everything uh, settles down a little bit uh, probably will be a better idea for us to judge whether it is likely to happen or not but i was i am really looking forward to that australian tour oh, i hope it really happens uh in jan or feb or whatever whenever it is i really hope that happens uh because yep. we 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 love enjoy we love coming to australia we love playing uh against you guys it's 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 great contest with you guys you know we we know once we go to australia once we land in australia nothing comes easy uh 
not just the runs or the wickets but also when you are out uh, you know uh, buying uh, out shopping or anything nothing comes easy there so we we love coming there and you know it's one of my favorite places in the world uh, australia i i love be, i love going to australia the crazy thing is when you guys come here it's like we are playing an away game your supporters yeah. Are crazy, <laughs> like they come out, know, and we abs we absolutely love it. Like you get the Swami Army, you get the drums coming out. It's it's yeah. it's one of the series I always look forward to, and that's that's one thing I like playing against England as well because of the Barmy Army. You've yeah, got so yeah, much yeah. external stuff, it, it and people. It, it's not it's not rude of me saying this, but when we're out playing a Test match in the field, sometimes you like you're standing out there going, "All right, when's when's the day going to finish?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, especially if you're having a tough day, but everything just gets you through the day and when everyone's up and about and um whatnot, it's 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 fantastic and it's it's awesome. And actually watching that series was it was quite challenging because you you can't you can't do anything, you can't help anyone. Your bowlers yeah. were on point like they you know, obviously we had some left handers in the team where your guys I think are hands down probably the best attack against left handed um batsmen in the world. Like yeah, just they they, they 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 zero in on one spot, and yep. very rarely do those three guys miss their spot. Yeah, you know, and um, it's a big credit to the way that you guys prepared as well. Um, but but mentally as well, like it was a it was a great thing for uh, obviously Indian cricket as you said, but it was hard to watch. It was very very hard to watch as an Australian cricket player because one helpless, I couldn't, but well, I couldn't do anything. Um, but uh, I know the guys fought well, and obviously, the, as we talk about rivalry, you know, yeah. obviously, hope it does happen because you know we get another opportunity to to go against each other, and I'm looking forward to that battle again when we come back over to India, um, yeah. you know, because they're the they're the they're the series that people don't realise they're the ones that you like. Basically, you're not you're not um, how do you say you're not meant to win those series when you go away to an opposition country. You're the yeah. underdog. Yeah. You know, you 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 be prepared to put up a a, a great battle, but yeah. you know, you when you do win those, it, it means so much more. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's something that I wanted to ask you. It's it's I'm sure it must be really really hard uh, for you to be away from the game during that phase. Um, but you made a great comeback after that. Uh, since IPL, that was the first tournament you played after that. And yep. if I remember, you had solid impact uh, when you left for the World Cup preparation and then the World Cup. And then, obviously, Ashes didn't go. But, you know, you got a, a highest score for Australian. Uh, no, not the highest. The second highest? Hayden, how yeah, many? Yeah. Hayden highest. 329. Yeah. Yeah. yeah At so the Wacker. He didn't, yeah. he didn't run much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, so, but anyway, I mean, it was a, it's been a great comeback for you. How, mentally, it must be tough, challenging to get through that phase and then to come out and uh, perform the way you have uh, in IPL, World Cup, and thereafter. How how what what sort of things you were doing? You were, I heard. I mean, we we heard that you were not allowed to even practice to go to training. <laughs> so it was damn tough, man. I, it's just yeah. how did you manage that period for you? It was it was challenging. The first sort of uh, I'll say three months, I didn't pick up a cricket bat. I I just said, you know, right, well, I'll just in, enjoy the time I have with the family. Yeah. Um, do what I can to sort of keep keep motivated, um, having it taken away from you and out of your control, and have, as you said, not being able to 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 practice. Um, it was it was a it was a time for me to sit back and just enjoy family time, um, yeah. you know I really enjoyed that and uh, you know as I am at the moment we don't get breaks we don't get to put our hand up and say I want a month off because it's not possible, yeah. you know we we try we try to play all three forms as much as we can, um, yeah. I I saw that there was a tournament in Canada that was happening so I thought it was a good opportunity to go there and play some decent cricket. Amongst some some great players, you know, a lot of the West Indian players were there. Um, yeah. Steve came and played, so I had that that there, and I had the Bangladesh Premier League as well um, yeah. to look forward to. But I think just spending the time at home and 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 working on like my fitness, I literally just 
I stayed on top of my fitness. I didn't pick up a cricket bat. And I think the longevity now has, has helped me. I think, you know, having the time off has furthered my career probably another, probably two years, maybe. Wow, as, you, as you said before, like three daughters, you've got a daughter. People don't understand. We do, we do have one of the best jobs in the world. You know, we love playing cricket. But yeah. the challenges we face are, you know, leaving the family at home, you know, the wife to look after the kids all the time. It's not fair. And for us, it's about, you know, leaving the game in the right way, um, yeah. you know, for the, for the next, next kid to come through and take our position and, and, you know, leave the legacy that they want for Australian cricket or Indian cricket. And um, we have all these other tournaments we can move on to. You know, once we're once we're done with our international career, we can keep playing IPL. We can keep playing in, you know, the Big Bash here and whatever other leagues there are. Because, you know, it's great to keep us in the game at this at this age moving forward, and it's great for the young guys to come through and and move our international cricket um, on as well. So, but yeah, to 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 sort of summarise that was just more keeping on top of my fitness, spending time at home, and having that drive and passion to come back and say, look. I, I still belong here um, and I deserve the opportunity again to come back to, to play for, for my country because everyone makes mistakes at the end of the day and, yeah, you know, to, to come back and, you know, what we, we always talk about people like to knock people down, bring them back again. And it just has that ebb and, ebb and flow kind of thing to it, but it's been good. I, that IPL was one of the things where I enjoyed was coming back, not having to captain and being under Kane, who's one of the nicest blokes in the world, yeah, and seeing and seeing his knowledge about the game and how he reads the game, yeah, um, it was it was good in that sense as well because I got to just enjoy the game, which I yeah. you know, it's it, it sort of people people don't realise the pressures that actually come with performing in every single game that you play, whether it's for Australia, India, IPL franchises, or the hardest thing I find back playing is like domestic cricket, like same as you, Ranji Trophy. Because there's more focus on you, you play for your country, where you should be dominating state cricket, which yeah. you, you know, you, you should be, but sometimes you're not going to be able to. Yeah. It's very, it's very difficult. Like, you know, some of the guys you've never faced before, never seen before, yeah. you get it, you, you can get a good ball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know? after playing so much international cricket, you have to go back and play uh, state cricket. It's, it's kind of, you know, challenging uh, for you to pick up and be motivated to go and perform. You know, it's it's not that easy yeah. because you're always used to playing uh, under the high pressure situation with so many people watching you in the stands. Uh, and suddenly that being taken out, it's it's kind of challenging and it's little, uh, you've, got, you've got to find motivation to go out there and play. Uh, which yeah. is why you, you know you you do the you you try and not get dropped from the squad. That's what happens, you know. If yeah. uh, in India, I don't know about Australia. Australia, like you know, a lot of you guys still, while you are playing uh, for for the national team, you still go and play domestic cricket. But for us here, it's it's very tough to play domestic cricket because our domestic season and international calendars, uh, you know, they they are together. So we we really yeah. can't uh, play domestic cricket and. Unless you are dropped from the team, only then yeah. you have chances chance to go back and play. Yeah. Uh, speaking of this empty stands, you guys were the only <laughs> team who experienced <laughs> that uh, against New Zealand. The first ODI you guys played, it was in empty stands. How did that feel? I think this is going to be the future of cricket at least for a while. The most bizarre thing was as a batsman, when you play a shot or the bowler bowls the ball. You always look up to watch the replay. There was yeah. no replays. Yeah. There was nothing. Yeah, yeah. So you, you you hit a shot and all you hear is the echo of the cricket ball. Yes. And then and then you might hear one or two claps from the boys. Yeah. But it was re it was really bizarre. Like we're so used to calling yes, no, and I was like, you don't need to say it that loud anymore. Like it's like yes, yeah. mate. like I, but it, yeah. it was really it was really really bizarre. It was literally like we were playing a a, a warm up game. Like. It was it was really surreal. Um, it was it it wasn't hard to get up and play play it, but like it was more the fact that like you like how do you know what it's like at home watching the game? Like 
it, it was really, really bizarre. But you know, it was a it was a good good game that we played against each other. But I don't know how long you can sort of sustain that because you you gain your you gain momentum from home crowd advantage. You gain your momentum from you know when you hit a nice shot, the cloud the the clapping from the crowd. You know, it gives you that motivation. Um, yeah, and and gives you the adrenaline. It it it, it is so bizarre. And like now our um, our rugby league is starting up again, and they're playing in front of no crowds as well. You know, it, I watched a couple of games before on TV before it got um, before it got shut down. It, it's just weird watching. Yeah. It's really weird. So like, it's very yeah, it's very hard. I don't know what it's going to be like if we come there and the IPL goes ahead at the end of the year. Um, you got to be very, you know, the government's doing this for the right reasons. You know, obviously yeah. li- lives are being lost. It's not like, you know, th- they're not saying don't go outside because, you know, they, they just don't want you to get effect- infected. They don't want you to catch it. They don't want you to spread it. Yeah. Um, you know, and like here, a lot of the people have been listening and there's a lot of people who haven't been listening. Um, yeah, it's a so same, it's it's challenging. same situation in India as well. And, you know, We've, we've got so many people here that's very hard and it's very hard <laughs> to control everybody like you saw the like you saw what happened outside the liquor shop um, but I saw police yeah. making people do push-ups in the street <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean they're finding ways uh, to scare people like uh, you know the, like that is one of the things that they did the other the other thing they did was chopped off uh, someone's head uh, with, with the razor, you know, uh, went, took him, make, made him absolutely bald. Uh, so they're doing different kind of, uh, like all this weird kind of stuff to make people scared. But eventually, it's 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 our responsibility to make sure that, you know, just try and stay indoors. And the only way we can contain this is by doing that. There is no other yeah, way exactly. until, until we find a cure or a you know medicine for this. We got to yeah. stay close. I mean, that's that's really the only exactly. thing. Exactly. I got one one question with with Shika. Does he make you face the first ball? He is an idiot. What can I say? <laughs> he doesn't like it, man. He doesn't like to face the first ball. Uh, he always says to me, the only yeah. time he ever wanted to face the first ball was when Habijan was bowling. Yeah, he, he goes, he, he goes, on uh, the spinners, <laughs> but he doesn't like to take on the fast bowlers. <laughs> But yeah, I was lo- <laughs> same as Finchy. Finchy always makes me face the first ball. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same here. Uh, I remember I there was this. This was way back in 2013, the day when I started opening the batting for India in limited overs. Uh, it was my first game as an opener, second game as an opener uh, in Champions Trophy. And Shikhar, I asked Shikhar, okay, Shikhar. We're playing against South Africa, guys like Stain, Morkel. I've never faced them with the new ball. Okay, so you got to take the strike, man. He's <laughs> like, no, Rohit. I mean, you've been playing for for a, for a while. This is my first tour. I, I I mean, I I want to. I can't. I mean, you you got to do it. I said, really, the guy who's a regular opener doesn't want to take the strike strike, and he wants me to take the strike. And then I took the strike. The first few balls, Morkel ball. Morkel was. Uh, Morning, Mokul Quick. was uh, yeah. He, he was bowling the new ball. The first three balls, I, I didn't see the first three balls honestly because I was not <laughs> expecting the bounce. Uh, yeah, I was not ready for it, and I don't know how the new ball will do. You know, uh, yeah. especially in England. And I, if I remember, it was absolutely cold that day as well. Uh, yeah. But then that was my first experience with Shikhar. But now, yeah, <laughs> we, we're comfortable. Like you know, uh, uh, she talking about okay, if. Finchie always says to me, like he says, if it's a left arm fast bowler, he wants me to face because he doesn't want the ball coming back into him. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the same, the same thing for me. I don't want the ball swinging away from me. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're not I, used to it. Yeah, I mean, especially now. I'm I, here. I in Mumbai Indians. I open with Quinton de Kock, and he's he's brilliant. He he told me the first day. Okay, here's the deal. We will do it alternate games. Okay, that's fair. I mean, alternate yeah. games. Of, alternate games. Okay, you take one game. I will take one game. That's fine. I mean, that's yeah. more than enough. But I mean, I'm used to it now. I take the first ball every time. So for me, right now, it doesn't make a difference. But 
imagine the first time i was opening the batting and then this guy comes uh, and says no i i can't take the strike <laughs> sometimes you know he's very annoying as well like in the middle we we was i'm setting up the plan okay this guy is bowling and this is his plan we have to try and do this <laughs> Two, five seconds later he goes okay what did you say <laughs> i mean you know imagine you know you are under tremendous pressure you 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 in the middle of the game and then this guy comes and says all these things where you know it kind of makes you frustrated you know you don't know how to react to that one thing i'll always i always love batting when i was batting with shikha without fail last ball he's going to run a single <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes without fail first ball and last ball he will run no yeah. matter what yeah it's always like a little dab to to point <laughs> yeah and you know, he's got that weird thing where when he when he defends the ball you know he takes that one or two steps and then he goes you think like, he's going to run yeah you think I he's going to run for 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 a non striker <laughs> it's so confusing whether he's going to run or not so now i've decided over the years batting with him i've decided <laughs> I'm not going to run unless I see the ball it's going in the gap. I have missed many runs also doing that. But I I have no regret because you know I was in trouble many a times because of that. I said I, unless I see the ball going in between I'm not running. I I am glad that you said that because I was like when I was batting with him at Hyderabad I was like I hope someone can say the same thing. It's very hard to it's very hard to judge. Very hard to judge. Unless he hit an aerial, I, yeah, I wasn't yeah. running. I couldn't run. <laughs> yeah, I think it's we've not ran out each other so many times. It was it was actually good. it was very similar very similar batting with uh, Gigi. Gigi yeah. was the same. Yeah, he always to always look to run the third man, or yeah. he'll run. Sometimes, you know what it is? If they hit a good shot out of the middle, they'll run. Yeah. <laughs> but i mean i i enjoy batting with him the only reason is like he's he's so elegant on the offside and he likes oh. to take on the bowlers uh, with the new ball and that allows me to take time because naturally i'm not an opener so for me to find boundaries in the first 10 overs is not easy which is why at times you see i like to go aerial and play those cross batted shot uh, which yeah. has gotten me into trouble many a times but shikhar on the other hand he's he's so good with his hands on the offside and he he, yeah. he you know if you look at the average boundaries that he hits it's in the first 10 overs yeah when the fielders are in and he likes to do that and you know i'm the opposite i like once the field is spread and i can t- take singles and you know it makes my job easier as well when i'm batting with him so in yeah, a way definitely. you know he's little irritating but at the same time he's he's done my job also <laughs> so i'm happy no, exactly Exactly. And oh, that's one thing I liked about with him is he he can relieve pressure in the matter yeah. of two or three balls always. Cuz he's always looking to score. Yeah, yeah. That's his mindset. With with you've been with Sunriser for a lot of years now. How it has been now you've been uh, appointed as a captain again. How's the franchise? How's uh, you know the owners do do they put too much pressure of winning games and is it like the same uh you know uh, with us like with us you know there's there is pressure for sure you know yeah but that pressure i think as of now i mean we've started enjoying that pressure and we know yeah. how to handle that is is it the yeah. same for you guys as well there yeah i think early early days i think um the hardest thing as i think a franchise owner because they're so successful in their right in what they do they're very successful yeah um for 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 them to understand how a cricketer goes about their business about their training um you know some days you know we're going to be waking up sore um how how do you how do you like transfer the training onto the field you can't win every game it's not possible to win every game you might yeah. but they, they they've gotten so much better over the the years I've been there like the last 3 or 4 years minus the year that I was out they've been wonderful like they've un- they understand exactly how we um go about our business um you always have the questions of you know why you know what went wrong you always have your debriefs um yeah. and like at the end of the day you know they're a great they're a great family they're a very well respected family um I can't speak highly enough of 
um, you know, the chairman and his wife and, and his daughter, like they yeah. always make us feel welcome. And I think that's the best thing about when you go to a, a successful franchise is that you feel like you're part of the furniture, like you're yeah. a family. Yeah. You know, I, I know when I was at Delhi, I really enjoyed um, Kieran was the, the, the owner G from GMR. He was, a, he's, a, he's a wonderful guy, really yeah. wonderful guy. Um, yeah. But sometimes in the, in the back part of the um, business, you know, you get a couple of people who might rustle, ruffle the feathers a little bit and yeah. cause them, cause some like animosity between players. And, you know, you can only play four overseas. So the hardest thing is if you've got a couple of overseas who believe they should be playing, when you've got a team who's been picked, you should be supporting the team. I know yeah. in past, past teams that I've played in have been like a bit like, you know, I, I should have been playing. But it's like, hang on. It, the franchise can only pick four players. It's very difficult. Um, so having been with Sunrisers, they totally understand everything. And I, I can't speak highly enough of them because they've treated me and my family well. They treat the guys well. Yeah. And I think the the respect that I have for them, you know, obviously asking me to be, be captain again yeah. because I had so much respect for their decision last year because it was right. They just wanted me to play with no pressure, freedom, and yeah. and do what I what I do best, and I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. And like, you know, I loved. I actually watched the the Mumbai Indians documentary, and look, I can I can say it as well. Being through this test series that was on Amazon, yeah. it does become a bit um, uh, a bit claustrophobic because the cameras are around all the time. So yeah. you you've got to be careful sometimes with you know what you say, how you behave. Yeah. Um, you know, there's been games where I've come in, I've thrown my bat and, you know, broken the chair, you know, yeah. you, you, obviously you, you can't do that. Um, but we get angry. Like we, we, you know, we got out, we're, we're angry at the way that we got out, yeah. but you know, I love that series and I could see the, the passion from your owners, um, and, and the son, you know, he, he makes me laugh yeah. because he's so passionate and driven for success. Yeah. And that's why, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it reflects down on the players as well. And it helps, yeah. uh, you know, it obviously must help having Sachin around as well. Um, you know, to for younger guys to see Sachin, to speak to him, to be in the same change room, like, man, that's a that's a big big thing, um, yeah. and that must motivate a lot of the guys. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what IPL has brought to the table. Like, especially for the younger guys uh, who, you know, besides playing for their state team, they they get to rub shoulders in IPL uh, with all the international players, with all this big. Uh, big names uh, in Indian cricket as well. So that is one thing that they've done really well. Uh, and I Sorry, really... Ch Chahal just said, I've got patience watching the documentary. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for his comment to come because honestly, I was a little surprised that he hasn't commented on it yet. There he is. Now. He, him and his TikToks who, as well. Who in your team is like Chahal? You know what I mean. Oh, uh, Ka Khalil. He does not listen. He does not. You know, he might as well walk around with the phone taped on his head. <laughs> oh, God, these guys are crazy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as you were saying. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's what IPL has done, bringing all these players together. It gives them a great opportunity, uh, you know. And, and when, when I talk to them now, all these younger players, you know, you, they seem to be so confident about their game about what they want to do so it's it's in a way it has done wonders over the years and i think yeah. i i really hope that this pandemic uh, you know stops pretty soon and then we get to do what we love and start playing cricket again there was someone before they said something about we're, we're no smith and coley but at the end of the day we make smith and coley cuz we take the shine off the ball <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's the hardest job. Hardest job in the world is it, it's like being president or prime minister. You know, you you open the batting. You're like guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people also tell me that you because the reason you score double hundred is because you open the batting, but they don't understand what happens with it when when the conditions <laughs> exactly. are tough. When you have to face guys like you know all these guys who bowl one fifty plus, uh, it, it's it's not easy. I mean, uh, so. I mean, whatever we try and do is is in the best best interest. And also, I mean, all any position you bat, 
it it brings the own challenge whether you open the batting you bat number 3 4 5 and there onwards it's it's a different challenge but uh, what what was going through what goes through your mind oh, i haven't scored a double hundred in one day cricket but do you get to a point where you just go all right i'm just going to try and hit every ball for a boundary <laughs> that's i don't do that uh, quite often but honestly speaking i i feel once i get past 100 i feel uh, you know i i cannot really get out unless i make yeah, a yeah. mistake yeah, uh, yeah because you know you when you obviously when you have scored 100 you've obviously put pressure on the bowlers you are seeing the ball nicely you are aware of the conditions um and you know who's not in great form in terms of yeah. the bowling options at that point yeah. so you know all of that uh so you try and figure out your way and just try and you know get through that uh 10 15 20 runs uh, uh and then you know there onwards from there i i feel yeah. you know i've always talked to myself that you can't get out unless you make a mistake so you just make sure that any bowlers who's bowling at you you just try and find boundaries rather than hitting big shots you know you know boundaries are boundaries are as good so i try and hit boundaries rather than hit uh, sixes and try and hit big shots i mean i also know that i'm not such a powerful hitter uh, it's better for me to pierce the field rather than clear the field so yeah. these are the option i i calculate i analyze a little bit and then uh, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah and what what you, which uh don't be biased here but where's your favorite indian place to bat which indian ground you're playing 2020 cricket you're not playing test matches or anything like that <clears throat> i mean i i have great record at eden gardens for sure yeah. so i would i would <clears throat> say eden gardens because all all, all the uh, memories uh, important memories have come at eden gardens like my first uh, ipl 100 is at eden gardens my 264 when i scored was at eden gardens my first test century is at eden gardens <laughs> so I, i i i actually love playing at eden garden it's just got something different about that place you know the outfield is really fast uh, and it's it's a paradise to bat that ground love, is something special <clears throat> yeah and i love batting in melbourne as well i love that atmosphere uh, you know melbourne's the, good the whole, the whole stadium itself you know i i just love it i just love that yeah it's a <clears throat> i love batting there under lights because you got like all the lights are shining down on you and it's yeah. like <clears throat> it's, it actually feels like you can't get out now that's how you feel when you're out there it's beautiful place to to play cricket but on like in india like i i can't i i can't go past like dharamshala is one of the most picturesque places i've ever played cricket like that test match yeah. we played the test match there like i was like i could sit here for weeks it's so peaceful it's calming it's like It's like you're not. It's like you're not in India. Like it's crazy. It's like you're yeah, in it's Switzerland you or something. <laughs> yeah, you you feel that way sometimes because you know how beautiful it is, and especially the mountains and all that behind the stadium. It's it's just unreal sometimes. <laughs> keep people keep on hearing me saying RCB gonna win. RCB gonna win. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, uh, I tell you what, they've had the best. I I think honestly, they've probably had the best team for ten years. Yeah yeah I mean we uh, honestly speaking we uh, sit and plan for RCB more than any other team because of Agreed. their batting lineup <clears throat> yep. I mean their batting lineup is just unreal man to have that batting lineup uh, you know our meeting finish I mean it goes up for a couple of hours especially when yep. we play against them uh, so yeah it's been unfortunate but I think they they've got balance this year i was that's the reason i mean i was looking forward to, for this year because you know all the teams if you look at it they've got great buys this year you know yeah this uh, is this is very was, very good yeah so i was i was sitting and analyzing about all the all the all the composition uh, of the of the different squads you know all the teams they look very much in balance uh and yeah i mean that's that's something that we can hope for the ipl to happen and we'll see you know what the players and do you reckon can, if they do you reckon ever will there be a chance to play five overseas yeah they might they might do that 
I'm here. If you add two more teams, I think you have to. But if yeah, add more. Five overseas will uh, LBL. Sorry. It'll be, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be different, but uh, yeah, when when probably they add two more teams, it'll be nice. Uh, yeah. To have them. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. I know in the Big Bash here, they're talking about another overseas player, but it's very challenging because you have your players that are coming through um, yeah. as well. So you have to give the opportunities to obviously the, the, the local players. But if you add two more teams, it's it's very difficult because I remember last time when we had two new teams, you, you, you want to strengthen the competition. So you've got to have your best players spread out all the teams as well. Yeah, and like, like we like here in Big Bash, we're not available all the time either. Yeah, so it's very difficult. Well, very when difficult. do you think your uh, borders borders will open up? When do you think you guys will be allowed to start traveling outside? Because I think I, <clears throat> I think for business you probably can. For business you can, but Sports. I think you you have to come back and yeah. still do the fourteen day quarantine. Yeah. But I think I think if if you go overseas, it's for business travel. It's recommended that you don't, but they will be um they will be doing something where they can put parameters in place for those who are actually going overseas. So let's say if we guys want you over uh, for IPL in September or October, whether will you guys will be able to travel around that time? I'll just make a phone call to the Prime Minister and ask. Uh, <laughs> no, I think, look, I think all in honesty, um, at the moment, everything is becoming better. We haven't, yeah. I'd, I'd, there's been a lot of deaths out of a nursing home, um, which is very, very sad. Um, and I feel for what's happened, happened there, not just for what with the deaths, but how it occurred. Um, and we had a ship that came in um, and that created a big, big issue. Um, but everything has been controlled. The frontline workers have been doing outstanding work. Um, but I think as each week happens, they're, they're releasing um, a couple of more things. So we can have 10 people now in a gathering, I think, this week. Not sure about my state or Melbourne, but I think in a probably two months' time, it will increase again. Yeah. Um, and I think the international flights out will probably happen uh, potentially, but international flights coming in, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. It's, I cannot believe what's happened. I'm sitting yeah. here today, still scratching my head going, this has stopped the whole entire world. <laughs> and this is bigger than, you know, it's obviously bigger than sport and that's crazy, but like, I still can't believe it. Like, I just don't know how this has happened, but when, I don't think we'll ever know. <laughs> I mean, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, all the sports across the world are assuming. I hope, you know, it's the same for cricket as well because football, uh, like you said, rugby in Australia is going to start pretty soon. Uh, football in Europe is starting pretty soon. So I hope uh, in a few months' time we see cricket as well. Uh, let's hope, fingers crossed. Exactly. Well, mate, you know what? We've been talking for uh, almost an what? hour now. It's we actually can... an hour, yeah. Like we could talk all day, but uh, I'll let you go. It's been great talking to you, man. I, it's here. great to see you. And hopefully uh, hopefully we're over there soon um, before you guys come here. But uh hope everyone keeps safe down there. Same same uh, from my side as well. Uh, look after your family. Uh, yep. And we shall see you soon. Likewise, mate. Take care. See Cheers. you, buddy. Thanks, David. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Great conversation there between me and Rowit. I think it was the hit bull you guys said. Um, take care. See you later.